love again. I Nigel, shut that door. It's not on, Wesley. My nerves are shot to pieces already. And if I have to listen to Syl sing for how long? Well, according to the Guinness Book of Records, Mr. Stanley, the current world record for marathon solo singing is 180 hours. 180 hours? That's... Good God, it's over a week. <laughs> How long? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Wesley. Cyril can't do that. I'm taking him looking at bedroom suites next Wednesday morning. Oh, come on, and this is all in aid of my new charity as well. I mean, we've had soap aid, live aid, band aid, and now my new campaign, and a very worthy one, deaf aid. Forget it, Wesley. I just cannot stand hearing Cyril sing. Mr. Stanley, I don't think you realize the risk Cyril is running by this effort. He could burn himself out. He could finish himself off as a singer. He could lose his voice permanently. He may never sing again. Yeah. Well, like you say, Wesley, it's a good cause. <laughs> Tell you, man, this charity of mine, this death aid, it's my big breakthrough. This time, I will be recognised. How do you mean? Do you mean like our Cyril that time on the identity parade? <laughs> Mind you, I warned him. I said it was a mistake to wear that fawn raincoat. <laughs> I'm talking about national recognition, ma'am. It's what people respect in this country. If you start one of them charities, they can't do enough for you. Look at that Bob Geldof. Ah, uh, always knew he'd do well, that Bob Geldof. He comes around here, you know. <laughs> Many's the time I've seen him trailing down our street, sobbing his little heart out. Ma'am! Because the other kids had bashed him up. They used to lie and wait for him, get him on his way home from dancing class. Dancing class? An elocution. His mum used to send him to Myrtle Lenshaw's Academy of Department back at Gladstone Street. Ah, oh, he was always nicely spoken, always well turned out. A real little dandy. Must be some other Bob Geldof, ma'am. Now, listen, Wes, I don't want to be a wet blanket, but this charity you're running, how does our Cyril fit into it? Because if you have to depend on... Oh, no, ma'am, there's no need to worry about our Cyril. He's well motivated. He's got his heart set on this world record. Do you realise, ma'am, he'll have clocked up 12 hours by now? Hmm. If he's still going. <laughs> it will be forever. Or I'll never come. No. Oh, God, still is me, man's alarm clock. You better climb out the window. In a restless world. It's the break, Mr. Seddon. Hey. The ping is gone, Mr. Seddon. It's Cyril's five minute break. Oh, don't bother me now, there, Glynis. The ping is gone. It's Cyril's break. <laughs> five minutes, Cyril. I've been watching you and him this last 20 minutes. In future, just don't bother telling me you've never slept with another man. <laughs> I wasn't asleep, Cyril. I just closed my eyes, that's all. So good to appreciate you singing better. Oh, yeah. Honest. So how come you were snoring all the way through Chapel of the Roses? <laughs> I wasn't snoring, I was humming along with you. Oh, that was clever. Because I haven't sung Chapel of the Roses yet. <laughs> Not clever, Dick. Don't start setting little traps for me or I'll start setting traps for you. Mouse traps. Well, it's not fair, Glynis. <laughs> Here's me got to stay awake for seven days and seven nights and you're falling asleep in front of me. Well, don't worry. I won't be falling asleep in front of you no more. I'll be falling asleep in my own comfy little bed at home. You've got a cruel tongue, you. <laughs> oh, sorry, Cyril. Here, have you better sit down or something? Or do you want to have something to eat or what? Well, well, what I really fancy is, you know... What? You know. Let's go in a stock room. You're talking about thingy? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you can put it right out your mind. Oh, Glynis, I've got to spend nearly eight days on that stage. All right, so I've got to do it without sleep, but life has to go on. Oh, let's go in a stock room. Ah, uh -uh, Cyril, the voice, the voice. Save it for the record bit. Well, she keeps thwarting me. Here's me making heroic efforts and she won't go in the stock room with me. Well, what do you want to go in there for? For me health, Wes. <laughs> it's a well-known fact. Singers need it. All the greats. Pavarotti, Engelbert, Humperdinck. Forget it. For the start, you'd only get a five-minute break. Plenty of time for Cyril, lad. <laughs> In fact, you wouldn't know what to do for the other four and a half minutes. I just want to know one thing. Why is it me making all the sacrifices? Cyril, it is your name that is going to be in the record books. It is you that's going to get the fame and the glory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, I've, even, I've written to the press about this. There's a lot of interest. I've even written to the Queen. Oh, me? 
absolutely about you. I've been telling them about all the money you're going to be raising for this worthy cause. Yeah, all the money. Yeah, yeah. right. One minute. One minute, Cyril. All right, Mr. Seddon, how's the yes. wife? Uh, not just now, uh, Wesley, thanks. It's a bit early for me. Bye. Here we go again. I love you, Cyril. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Glenn. I cracked this record. I'll be somebody. You already are somebody, Cyril. You're my future husband. <laughs> Marvellous. Marvellous. Here's me knocking myself out, building up his morale, and you destroy all my work with one unpleasant word. <laughs> Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. Good boy, Cyril. Only 167 so hours to go. Oh, <laughs> what? That's you. Strangers in the Wesley, Wesley, there is just no way Her Majesty the Queen is coming here. World record attempt or no world record attempt. I, I think she will, Mr. Stanley. I've written her one of my best letters. He writes to her a lot, don't you, Wesley? Always asks after the corgis. I said the best time for her to drop in would be just about the climax of Cyril's world-shattering record bit. Oh, I said she needn't worry about club membership. I hope that's all right with you, Mr. Stanley. And perhaps you'd better have a word with Nigel. We don't want any scuffling on the door, you know? Oh, no. Look bad if Nigel turned funny on air. I am 60 years old today. If that hasn't bad enough, I have to mix with people who believe the Queen is coming to see them. No wonder I'm depressed. No wonder the doctor says I mustn't read the papers. Oh, many happy returns. Can't we not forget it was your birthday? Yeah, happy birthday, Mr. Stanley. Cyril's break. Another hour nearer the record. OK, Cyril, it's your break time. Give me the mic. Cyril, it's your break time. Ever since that night. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Cyril <laughs> McGregor. Now into round 76 of his world marathon record bid. Yeah! And don't forget, he's singing for the deaf. Yeah, wish I was one of them. <laughs> so give for deaf aid while Cyril is silent on his five-minute break. And remember, let your money talk for you. Yeah! You feeling all right, Cyril? Well... Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, <laughs> too few to mention. That's good. I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. Cos her mother worries, you see. I, I faced it all and I stood tall, man. Mr Stanley, Mr Stanley, the police are here. The police? Mr Colwyn Stanley. Me? No, no, uh, uh, my name's, uh, uh, Worthington. <laughs> the information about certain pies has been laid at the health inspector's office and I have a warrant to seize the aforementioned pies. I bought those pies in good faith. It's coming to something when you can't have the widow of a dead friend. And I must warn you. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Oh, happy birthday to Colvin! Happy birthday to you! Well done, girl, well done. Great day, Mr Stanley. This is uh, Shirley and this is Jackie. Uh, this is part of my new venture, the McGregor Brothers Personal Greetings Company. This is what I call our WPC gram. What? You mean, you mean these girls work for us? Well, sort of. Well, when we've got something for them to do, you know. I tell you what, I'll have them standing by the night you break the record. The record shows the talk the blows, Wes. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Hey, they might even do a little turn for you, you know what I mean? <laughs> no. I don't want Cyril mixing with girls who take their clothes off. You better leave all that side of the business to Wesley. Glenn, Glenn, you're gonna have to come to terms with this insane jealousy. You, you have to accept it when your man is a sex symbol. You a sex symbol? You don't know nothing about sex, you. You think ball players taking me to watch Everton? <laughs> Do not. Well, not just watching Everton. It's just everything else that goes with it. Singing on the terraces, fish and chips on the way home. Mr Bibby, uh, this is a great honour. Which is the lad with the tough tonsils, Colwyn? Uh, you must mean Cyril. This is him. Cyril. Mr Randolph Bibby. He wants to meet you. Always a pleasure to meet a fan. Mr Bibby is not a fan, Cyril. He's a man of intellect and discernment. How's business, Mr. Bibby? Betting shop's thriving, I hope. That's why I'm here. 
Pardon me, boys. Is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo? <laughs> Cyril McGregor, ladies and gentlemen, going into our 74 of his solo singing marathon. Yeah! Sorry about that, Mr. Bibby. Sorry, I shot me. <coughs> uh, what are you drinking, Mr. Bibby? Uh, no, no, no. I want to keep this as short as possible. Now, the reason I'm here is I'm taking a lot of business on your man there. I'm giving 50 to one. Hey, you can put me down for a pound at that price, Mr. Bibby. Uh, do you do each way at all? The box goes. <laughs> if Cyril breaks that record, I stand to pay out a lot of money. So I'm here to give you a friendly word of advice for him. It'll be dangerous for Cyril's health. Singing such a long time. Do you take me meaning? But he's doing this for charity, Mr. Bibby. Nobody does more for charity than me. You ask Colwyn. That's right. Does a lot for charity, Mr. Bibby. Cripple Jockey's Fund. <laughs> cripple Stable Lads Fund. And if I have to, I'll start a Cripple Singers Fund. <laughs> <laughs>
if you could get her to attack Cyril. <laughs> I'm more or less positive I can get that in the paper. <laughs> Wesley, I am sick of hearing him. Oh, you another 24 hours, Mr. Stanley. My customers are sick of hearing him. Look at the club. I'll oh, be fair. What about last night when he finished I Believe? The audience rose to him as one man. Because that's what the audience was, one man. <laughs> now, look, he's here again. He told Faye that doctors are treating him for masochism. <laughs> one hour near the record, ladies and gentlemen. 159 hours. Let's hear it for Cyril McGregor. Yeah! <laughs> See, even that masochists have gone off him. Where's... Where's have gone? Only another 24 hours, Cyril, and you will be the world champ. It's no good, what's the body? Cyril, Cyril, you've almost broke the record. Sorry, Wes, no way. Oh, God. They've got Kalenis. Who's got Drenis? Nasty Randolph Bibby and his thugs. This fella came in my calf. We had a bit of a crisis on. That cat had got its head stuck in the custard jug again. <laughs> you just can't help that cat. He won't be told. Anyway, this fella... Hey, do you know he had the look of the Duke of Kent about him? <laughs> oh, but he wasn't the Duke of Kent, because the Duke of Kent's more twine told them what this fellow was. Man, will you get on with the point? Well, anyway, this fella said to me, you're Cyril McGregor's mother, aren't you? I said, what if I am? I get blamed for everything round here. <laughs> so he said, tell Cyril we've got Glennis. <laughs> Thought she was a long time on that nonogram. It was a trap. Don't suppose they'll pay neither. That's ten quid down the swanee. So then I said to him... I suppose we can say goodbye to the nun outfit as well. Look, do you want to hear this or not? So I said to him, what do you want Glennis for? So he said, well, we know it's no good threatening Cyril, cos anyone with a voice like his that sings in public must have guts. <laughs> so instead, we're getting at him th through his loved ones, and if he doesn't pack this world record effort in, he won't see Glennis no more. <laughs> Cyril! Hi. Wake Cyril. up, Cyril! Oh, I can't! Oh, I can't! Oh, I can't. Uh -huh. Cyril, Randolph Bibby's got Glennis, and he says if you don't pack up this record bit, you'll never see her again. <laughs> Cyril? <laughs> shoes when Cyril gets old here. Anybody touches me, anybody just says anything to me, he goes fighting mad. We were at this dance once and while he was in the gents, this fella pulled the chair away just when I was sitting down and when I told him, Cyril said, Glennis, he said, you better not point him out to me because once I start on him, I'll kill him. That's what he's like. I've heard people saying in the club, that's Cyril McGregor's girlfriend, you'd have to be crazy to try anything there. <laughs> It's good danger mouse, isn't it? Could you have the sound of the thing? Changes in the mind. Exchanging glances, lovers at first sight. I am disgusted with One Cyril. When I think of poor Glennis, he's just got no consideration, has he? I mean, I'm gonna have to train another girl to run that cloakroom. <laughs> never cared for Glennis, really. Oh, no, 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 you're wrong there. He's mad so jealous tiny. about her. What about that time on the North Pier at Blackpool when that fella was chatting her up? He was a big bloke and all, wasn't he? That didn't stop Cyril, did he? He went straight up to him, snatched his white stick and flung it in the sea. <laughs> oh, Glennis was that proud of him. Piece of cake, this man can sing. In a couple of hours, I've cracked the world record. Yeah, and what about Glennis, eh? I don't suppose you'll be able to live with yourself after this. I've lived a life that's full, whereas I've travelled each and every byway. Ah, Cyril! Well, what is a man with It's about these customers that keep parking on the pavement. We're still getting complaints. Hey! Hey, my little beauties! Do you mind, sir? Hey, in a couple of hours from now, you two girls could be having a ball. 
Because he can be having two. <laughs> I won't tell you again. For the last time, take your hands off. Oh, I love it. Hey, the strict voice. I, you know, I, I want the full strip, you know. <laughs> hey, what a lovely pair. And your mate's nice, too. <laughs> and that's it. Your next sunshine. Come on, Melanie. <laughs> hey, you have to be quick. I've already got a couple of minutes. <laughs> Singer gives up world record attempt for love. Me and Cyril in the paper. It says it's one of the great love stories of our time. I've always said, Mrs McGregor, that deep down, Cyril's a very caring and mature person. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm glad I never chucked that rubber sheet away. Still asleep, is he? Yeah. I wonder what the record is for sleeping. Maybe Cyril can have a crack at it. Not in my club, we couldn't. Yeah, we had a great night last night. When the punters heard that Cyril had gone, they came flocking in. Uh, the Queen never turned up, by the way. No, I phoned her up, told her not to bother because Cyril had fallen by the wayside. <laughs> you telephoned Buckingham Palace? Yeah, why not? And you spoke to the Queen? Well, no, she couldn't come to the phone. She was upstairs. <laughs> it's always the same, isn't it? You just get settled and the phone rings. <laughs> so I told her to tell him not to come. It's just as well I rang her, though, you know, before she started out, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> you seen the paper, Mr Stanley, about me and Cyril? Yeah, I've seen it. They got the weather forecast wrong and all. <laughs> Strangers in the night. Oh, so nice, uh, hey, what? Where am I? Oh, oh God. Did they break the record? Yeah. You very nearly did, Cyril. Oh, God. You did more than break the record, Cyril. You did a very noble thing last night. Don't you remember? You sacrificed the glory for Glenn's sake. Not in the mood for jokes, Wes. I'm not joking, Cyril. It's all there in the paper. See for yourself. Reg Twillett did you proud. I stood on a hill and talked with God last night. <laughs> Frightened women. Some with see-through blouses. <laughs> so they're supposed... Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. Cyril McGregor, 44. Who... 44? What does he mean, 44? <laughs> Who to save the woman he loves? What, what do records matter? Chuckled Cyril last night, compared to my love for Glennis. Yes, we will be getting married very soon. <laughs> Mum told me to tell you, Cyril, she knows now she was wrong about you, and she's sorry about that time, you know, with the coal shovel. <laughs> Glennis, Glennis, I'm not worthy of you. No, no, I'm a failure. How can you say that? Think of all the money you've raised for charity. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. How much money did we collect, Wes? £1,473. And when I handed it to them at the Hard of Hearing Club, they said to say a special thank you. What? You mean you give it away? <laughs> you certainly did it for charity. Begins at home, Wesley. And my view should end up there as well. Oh, God. I've failed in my record bit. I've got a sore throat. The paper says I'm marrying Glennis. I haven't even got any money to show for it. <laughs> it's a dream, innit? I'm dreaming all this. <laughs> I, I, I'm still asleep. <laughs> Cyril. What? I forgot to tell you. You're in court next week. <laughs> Assaulting the police officer. 